Welcome back to Enchanted Bayou. My name is Cassandra, and if you're new here, welcome. Happy to have all of you guys back. Today, we are going to talk about a murder mystery case. One that has been out there for a very long time. Happened about this time of year, 22 years ago. So if you don't know who I'm talking about from the title already, then I'll let you know. I am talking about a little beauty queen named John Bonet Ramsey. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit of the story, and then we'll go ahead and jump into the spirit box and see if maybe we can talk to the guides and maybe even talk to her spirit and see if we can find out uh, who really murdered John Bonet. Um, it's been 22 years now. She was murdered on the morning of December 26th or the night of December 25th. And still, after this whole time, even with all the new developments we have in DNA and criminology, we still do not know who her killer is. So we're going to look into that. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story, and uh, let's just jump into it. So all this took place in 1996 in Boulder, Colorado, and it was right before Christmas. John Bonet came from a very well-to-do family, and her mother and father were very well-to-do. They lived in Boulder, Colorado in a very nice house. Um, everything up until Christmas. Christmas seemed to be going very good. John Bonet was a little beauty queen. Her mother would dress her up and take her to the different pageants and everything. Some say a little too risque dress, but she had just won Little Miss Christmas. Then shortly after that, the Ramseys had a, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Parade of Homes, but basically the really nice fancy homes in the area will get decorated up for Christmas or for whatever season and people will be allowed to go and tour these homes. And so they had just did that a couple days ago and they were having holiday parties. Everything seemed to be going great. Typical Christmas season. Christmas came and went. Everyone went to bed on Christmas night and then Patsy Ramsey woke up at 6 in the morning on December 26th. She doesn't know why. She just kind of woke up out of the blue but she got up. She started to go downstairs and she found some paper all scattered about on her stairs and she picked it up and it was a ransom note. So she finds this ransom note laying about her stairs. It is like three pages long. This thing is huge. She rushes into John Bonet's room, throws open the door, and realizes that her daughter is missing. She screams for her husband. Then she calls 911 and of course reports that you know she found this ransom note. Her daughter is missing. A few minutes later, police arrive at the Ramsey house and they start going through the house looking for her. In the meantime, John, who is the dad, and Patsy get on the phone. They're calling their family. They're calling their friends. They're letting everyone in. The Boulder police made the mistake of letting all these family and friends into the house. So even though it should have been treated as a crime scene, you've got all these people now walking through, basically contaminating all the evidence. So it was kind of a mess. So they searched for hours and hours, and they couldn't find John Bonet. Another mistake that the Boulder Police Department made was one of the police officers told the father, John, why don't you go start from the top of the house to search the whole house because it's a very large house, but why don't you search the whole house and see if you can find her? So instead of, it's kind of a little weird though, you know, he should have been kept out, the police should have been searching, but Another thing that was a little weird was that instead of searching from the top down, he immediately went to the basement. In the basement, off on a side corner from the basement, there was a wine cellar, and that's where he found his daughter laying wrapped up in a white blanket. Instead of leaving her there or anything like that, he picked her up, of course, and you know, I probably would have done the same thing, so I can't put any fault on this at all. I would have grabbed my baby up. So he picked his baby up, he carried her upstairs to the living room and the police checked her and found out that she was indeed dead. Okay, so here's where the story gets really, really crazy. They just found out that Bonet is dead, which is kind of strange that someone left a ransom note even 
though they had murdered the victim. And then it just turns into a mess. Basically what had happened, they had found that someone had used a stun gun on her. There is evidence of a possible sexual assault. It appears that she took a like hard blow to the head. Maybe she was knocked down or possibly hit in the head. There was some talk that she was hit in the head so hard it would have had to been with like a, a heavy object and there was a heavy flashlight that could have inflicted the same blow at the crime scene, but that wasn't really tested because there were so many people around, so there's some controversy over the flashlight. The other thing, though, is the reports that I found, and from what I've seen, it said that she was knocked out in the head, and then, like an hour and a half, two hours later, that she was actually later killed with a murder weapon that was made from a paintbrush that came from, get this, Patsy, which is her mother, her mother's painting kit. Uh, so they actually found that the mur the true murder weapon was from the mother's painting kit. It was made from one of her paintbrushes. So that is just really crazy. Another thing about the ransom note, it was written on a pad of paper that the Ramses had kept downstairs by their phone, you know, back in the old days, the old days, 1996, but back in the old days, people used to keep like a pad of paper by their telephone so that if someone left a message or whatever, they could take notes and jot things down. And so the ransom note was actually written on that paper. So that seemed a little strange too, especially such a long ransom note. Who sits down and takes the time in the house when you're kidnapping someone to write a three page ransom note? I mean, that is just bizarre. Another thing too about this ransom note, not only was it written on the pad of paper from the Ramsey's house, but they had um, a handwriting analyst review all of the, the ransom note and they were able to exclude John completely, but they couldn't exclude Patsy. So a lot of the same handwriting techniques that she used in her writing were the very same that was on the ransom note. Now, I also watched a documentary where they were looking at even more of this evidence, and a newer handwriting analyst was reviewing this, and it said that it looked like from what he tell, a man was dictating basically to a female what to write in this note based upon what was being said in it and then how it was coming across. So I'm not a handwriting expert. I don't know how you can tell all that from a note. It seems like a lot, but hey, that's what they do. That's their job. So I'm going to go with that. That's the new evidence out there. Now, why do we think maybe that John, the father, and Patsy, the mother, were possibly the murder suspects in this? Well, First of all, there were no signs of a break-in into the house. And second of all, when the cops said that they wanted to question them and, you know, rule them out as suspects, the Ramses did not want to talk at all. They did not want to talk to the police. They lawyered up really fast. In fact, as soon as they found John Bonet was dead, they were actually from Atlanta, Georgia. And John actually called his private jet and the pilot and wanted to book a trip back to Georgia, back to Atlanta. If it were me personally, I would be, I'm not going anywhere. I want to find whoever hurt my child. But while she is there still at the house, dead, your baby girl is dead. He's calling his pilot and they're starting to lawyer up. Now, when they did finally talk, they talked to CNN. They didn't go to the police. They said that they felt the police were trying to accuse them. Well, yeah, because you're not talking to the police. But they didn't go to the police or anything. They went and they did an interview on CNN for the whole public to see instead of working with the police. A lot of people were also angry and pointing the fingers at them because when they did speak to the media, it wasn't coming out and... You know, everyone has different reactions, but you would think that since their child had just been murdered, that they would be coming out and crying and demanding that this person be caught. And instead, they were coming out and instead of being upset over their daughter, it seemed more in the media that they were upset that they were being treated badly by the press, they were being treated badly by the police department. The focus was not on finding who killed John Bonet, And that's what a lot of people said. I've never been in that situation. I thank the Lord that I've never been in that situation. I don't know how I would act, but I would think that I would be out there wanting the person who killed my daughter found and caught, as well as many Americans and actually people all the world, all around the world felt that they would 
feel the same way, not being angry at the police and the press and and not cooperating with them. I mean, if you are completely innocent, why wouldn't you cooperate on helping catch this guy out there before maybe he does something else? So another couple of things that made people look at John and Patsy as possibly the killer of John Bonet uh, was in the ransom note. It requested a very specific amount of money. The amount that the ransom note to get her back was for was $118,000. Now that's a lot of money, but they had a lot more money. So one, why wouldn't any killer ask for like a million dollars? You know, they, they probably could have came up with something along those lines. And two, what's really weird is that this 118000 just so happened to be the amount of John's recent bonus that he had gotten from his company. So someone had to know how much he was making it work. So that seemed a little weird too. A couple of other things that were strange, they, it had actually snowed because in Boulder there's actually a lot of snow, usually around this time of year, and there were no tracks in the snow that would, that they believed would be someone breaking into the house. Now, other people have gone over this as evidence and said in the backyard there's not a lot of snow anyway, but you would think that there would be some tracks left in the snow that they would have found if someone broke in the house. Uh, the police said that the window that could have potentially been the break-in point if there was one because there was a broken window that was downstairs in the basement where she was found but that it was too small for a person to craw crawl through and I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit here because they really messed up on that one. One other little key piece of evidence to, or not key piece of evidence, but key suspicion, I guess you could say, is that when the police officer made the mistake and told John that he'd go through the house and look for his daughter, he almost immediately went to her body. I mean, this is a huge, huge house, okay? Police officer mentioned, you know, start from the top, work your way down. Uh, he found her in the basement. He went almost immediately to her. And this is after searching for several hours, of course, just to be able to walk immediately to the basement in this wine cellar that was kind of a couple doors off of the main basement area and find her that quickly uh, just caught everyone's eye as a little suspicious. Now, as far as whether or not they did it, Here's something that does seem a little strange. They did keep their story the same the entire time. Now they might have come out feisty, they might have not wanted to cooperate with the police, they might have felt that the police were on a witch hunt to basically accuse them, but they kept their story straight the entire time and one thing that they did do is they hired a private homicide investigator to check into the situation and this man was supposed to be the best and they had the money of course to hire the best and his name was Lou Smith and remember how I told you about that window that the Boulder police said oh no one can get through that window Lou Smith actually just went and showed everyone and he had it recorded that he can climb in and out of that window and there's also a picture from the crime scene that no one seemed to notice but underneath that broken window was a suitcase and so someone could have put that suitcase there to hop right back out that window when they were done kidnapping her if that was their intent. So they hired this investigator who is, you know, one of the best around who comes up with all this amazing evidence that the police didn't catch. If you're guilty and they killed their daughter, now there's a lot of stuff that points to them, but if they were guilty and they did this, why would you go out and hire the best investigator? But they did, like I said, a lot of things that were kind of crazy. You know, why wouldn't you cooperate police? So there's just really no understanding on what their actions were and why, why they did that. Now, as far as who else could have been the killers, they looked for a long time and they they didn't have enough evidence to convict. However, there was DNA on John Bonet's um, underwear and also on her little leggings. And at the time, DNA just wasn't all that good as far as the testing and everything else. So unfortunately, there wasn't much found from that. And still today, we don't have a lot from that. Not enough to go on and find out who's in the system. I saw one report saying the little bit of DNA that they found, that could have been from the guy who in another country that that makes those underwear. I guess it's possible. I don't know a ton about DNA stuff. If you guys know, maybe you can let me know a little bit better. 
but I did see one report talking about that. So that just seemed a little crazy to me. But as far as the DNA, as of today, they are still testing it and running it and trying to match it up with someone but nothing has ever come of it. One time, they did get close to possibly someone that could have committed this crime, and there was a man, and his name was Michael Helgoth, and the FBI and the Boulder Police Department came out with a very strong statement, and they said they were limiting the search down, that they basically had all the facts, of to who this person could be and that soon everyone else would be eliminated except that person and that person basically should be worried because they're going to find him. They said the only person that's going to be left is you on the list. As far as Michael Helgoth goes, this gets a little crazy too. So we're not just going to start with his suicide. So his suicide happened 24 hours after the FBI came out with that statement. The FBI and the Boulder Police came out with that statement. But going back a little further, his co-workers at this junkyard actually overheard him say that he always wondered what it would be like to, sorry it's graphic, but bash another human being's skull in, and that he had a special deal that would be coming up where he was going to make a lot of money and he said like 50 60 thousand that's kind of weird because you know of course the ransom notes 118 so why is he saying 50 60 thousand but not long after he said that and all that happened then John Bonet turned up dead now when the FBI and Boulder police came out with this statement saying that they are close to catching whoever did this within 24 hours he was dead now Officially, it was ruled a suicide, but there are a lot of things that don't make sense. Some of the criminal investigators nowadays have looked into the old pictures and found two sets of footprints in the Ramsey basement. Now this gets a little crazy, but they say that it's two male footprints and that there are possibly two male killers or two killers, okay? I don't know about this. Here's my thoughts on this theory. They just, the Ramsey family just recently had a whole bunch of people, I mean, possibly even up to 2,000 people view their home and their Christmas decorations, doing their parade of homes where people go through your home like I talked about. Also, when they found JonBenet and Ramsey dead, remember they called their family, they called their friends, you had all the cops there. So, could those boot prints be from anyone else? Absolutely. I don't think the Boulder Police was very great at doing their job. Did they take those before the whole fam those pictures before everyone started walking through the house and the whole family started walking through the house? I don't know. But there's a theory out there that there are two killers and that they left the two different boot marks, okay? Now, from the new data that we have, Michael Helgoth actually owned a pair of shoes, they were called High Tech. The footprint in the basement actually had the same logo, High Tech, on it. So he owned the same pair of boots, but again, when you have, you know, 2,000, 2,500 people coming through your home, could someone else have owned those exact same boots? I would think so, but a lot, there's a lot saying that, that those boots match. I, I, you know, I don't know. That's people saying from looking at it nowadays and looking back on the situation saying that it matched. That's not people at the time saying that it matched. Okay, so there was one other person who could have been a suspect, and his name, he went by Daxus, and his real name was John Mark Carr, and this man, started sending these really crazy emails to a professor at the local university who was very much into investigating John Bonet's case and trying to help and work with the police. And he started sending letters like how much he loved her, how he had been following her beauty pageants, how her murder was an accident, and he can, he fully confessed to the murder. So the police set up this crazy sting operation. He was actually in another country. And the police set up this crazy sting operation, arrested him, but the DNA cleared him. So now where do we go? We've got the parents, we've got a messed up investigation from the Boulder police, we've got tons of tainted evidence, we have Michael Helgoth who maybe committed suicide, maybe not, we've got some crazy guy from halfway across the world emailing that he murdered her, so we need to get to the spirit box and figure this out. Now there's a lot more to this case that I'm not going to get into. I mean I could probably talk about this for 
hours, you know. But if you're more interested in it, you know, you can. there's a ton of documentaries out there. You can go check them out. But I just want to give you a brief rundown of the people who were the main suspects and see if we can talk to the spirit box and talk to my guides and talk to see if we can get even JonBenet's spirit to come through and see if maybe we can hear names like Michael Helgoth and see if he was the person who you know committed this murder or John Mark Carr or was it her parents now her mom actually has since passed uh, her mom had cancer and passed from cancer and the DA's office later among a lot of controversy actually cleared her mom and her dad not long after her mom passed just a couple of years after her mom passed saying that and the DA actually wrote a letter of apology saying that they were sorry for everything they had put them through and that they were no longer suspects. But a lot of the police, a lot of the community was appalled by that because they still felt and still do that the parents should still be suspects. So we're going to go ahead, talk to the spirits, see what we can find out. Maybe nothing, maybe something. Let's see what we can do because it's time we got some kind of conclusion to this case and figure out what happened the day after Christmas, 22 years ago. if you'd like. Ethan and E, are you there? <laughs> I really need your help talking to a young girl. Her name is John Bonet Ramsey. What do you got? Her name is John Bonet Ramsey, and she was murdered in 1996 in her own home in Boulder, Colorado, the day after Christmas, or maybe late Christmas night. So, can you, it. you got it? Can you get John Bonet? John Bonet, when you're there, can you say hello? Okay, I want to only speak to my guides and Jean Bonnet right now. It's very important. Jean Bonnet, can you tell us if you know who killed you? Do you know who killed you? Who killed you? John Bonet, did your parents have anything to do with your murder? Are you there, sweetheart? Did your parents have anything to do with your murder? <laughs> Sweetie, you can use some of my energy to come through more. Just John Bonet and my guides. No one else. Stop it.
Oh, I am super on edge. Okay. Okay, 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 that scared me. John Bonet, did Michael Helgoth have anything to do with your murder? Speak up, sweetheart. Are you there? Where'd you go, dear? Jean-Benet, we all want to know, how are you doing now? How are you? Are you in heaven? Oh my gosh, I keep hearing a little kid voice. I knew I would, but ugh. What is heaven like, dear? What is it like where you are? Can you tell us what it is like where you are? Can you describe it? What does it look like, dear? with your mommy, Patsy? Okay, just in case it wasn't clear, I'm going to ask you one more time. And I want you to even use my energy, only Jean Bonnet. You can use my energy. Please come through. Can you say the first and last name of the person who murdered you? Did John Mark Carr have anything to do with your murder? Okay, I'm going to use another spirit box. Okay. Okay, this is going to sound really strange, but I keep seeing my shadow because, of course, I have lights on, everything like that, so you guys can see me better. But I'll see my shadow, and I'm, like, jumping, like, if I'm in a cemetery or something really spooky. And, I, you know, I, you guys have seen my videos. I invite spirits over all the time. If anything becomes a problem, then I go through and I do a huge cleansing on my home. Um, I'm feeling really antsy right now and really jumpy and really just like shook. Um, I wish I could explain it. So we're going to do the other spirit box and we'll go from there. But oh my gosh, I'm like even out of breath. Um, this is weird. I feel like I'm out alone in a cemetery. I haven't done that in a long time, but I just feel really shaken up. And I've done talk to people who have been murdered before, but I don't know what what's quite going on tonight. Uh, so let's get in the other spirit box and maybe we're getting some answers. I hope we're getting some answers because uh, I'm not feeling good. Let's try this, try this one. Okay, so as you know, my spirit boxes get loud and I don't cut them or limit out the noise. So here we go. Oh, this is the app I use if you're new here, by the way. It is for iOS. It's called SBX12 Spirit Box. I just use the light version, uh, which is free, and it works wonderful for me. And lots of times I can even get full sentences through here clearer than the other spirit box. So we're going to try and ask some of the same questions and see what we can find out. Ethan and E, is John Bonet still here? Behind me? Is that, is that what you said? Okay. Who 
Who's behind me? Who's here with me? Okay. No one is allowed to be here except my guides and Jean Bonnet. Ethan, is Jean Bonnet still here? Okay. Jean Bonnet, dear, can you tell us how you are doing now? Come talk in this box, dear. Ethan will help you. Jean Bonnet, can you tell us, dear, who killed you? people murdered you. Can you say all their names? Was your murder an accident, honey? and millions and millions of people have been so concerned for you and so worried about finding you justice. Do you have any messages for them, dear? Is there anything we could find that could help us find out who killed you? Okay, thank you for coming and talking to me, sweetheart. Bless you and you take care of you. If you need to stay around here for a while, you're welcome to do that, okay? Okay, if you want to stay around here, you're welcome to do that. I have a little girl, and she would probably love to play with you if you want to hang around for a while, but it's just Jean Bonnet. That's all who can stay here. So, hopefully we got some answers. I don't know what was going on before when... I don't know, my heart was racing, um, I caught my own shadow, and I jumped. It was crazy, and it was right after I told her that she could use some of my energy, but I don't think it was her using my energy. Uh, so after I clarified that and said I just want to talk to her, I started feeling a little bit better. So I am doing okay. Hopefully we got some good answers. All my videos are reviewed by me and a specialist, so anything we hear will be throughout the video. Anything extra that you hear, please leave it in the comments below. Would love to hear from you guys. Uh, let me know who you would recommend, you know, similar to this, like, murder mystery case that we could talk to next. I'm going to be trying to throw these in along with some of the other stuff that we're working on and see what we can find out. So make sure to like this video, subscribe, share with your friends. We're growing like crazy. Keep it up. You guys are doing awesome. And check out the Patreon, too, and become part of the family at patreon.com slash Love you guys, and I will see you soon.